Welcome to Beat Diabetes Myths and Facts. COVID-19 has reached almost all parts of the world. Just when we thought we were getting away from COVID-19, Omicron emerged. Since it has emerged in mid-November, Omicron has raced across the globe like wildfire. Though it, it has milder symptoms, almost the same as seasonal flu, the World Health Organization has warned that Omicron cannot be dismissed as a common cold or a mild disease, and there are reasons to worry about it. People with diabetes and heart disease can face severe complications. Due to the previous lockdown and work from home culture, people's lifestyles are already severely disrupted. Many people have become physically inactive and developed irregular eating patterns, which leads to unhealthier lifestyles and aggravation of lifestyle related diseases. A multi sectoral approach promoting healthier diets and increasing physical activity can help in slowing down the diabetic epidemic and heart diseases. Be diabetes myths and facts will impact and help a large number of people to prevent or control metabolic disorders. Today we have with us experts to share with you advice on leading a healthy life. So if you have any questions you would like to ask them, please send them to us via WhatsApp to the following number. The number is plus 91 -9167 That is the number to send us your questions for our experts. Do also please send in your name and your location. Today joining us the guests are, we have with us Dr. Anand Shankar, MBBS, MD Consultant, Physician and Diabetologist, Shankar Diabetes Care Center. Dr. Kundan Khamkar, MBBS, MD Medicine, Fellowship in Diabetes, Consultant, Physician and Diabetologist, Director Ayur Dayapro, Diabetes Clinic Pune and Dr. Purushottam Mittal, MD DNB General Medicine, DNB Cardiology, FESC Interventional Cardiologist, Sudha Hospital and Medical Research Center, Kota. Thank you so much doctors for joining us today to discuss this very important issue. Starting with you first Dr. Shankar, Omicron is spreading at a rate we have not seen with any previous variant. What can you do to prevent an Omicron infection and what specific precautions should people with diabetes be taking? Uh, thanks for that question. Uh, actually, uh, first we have to understand what are the factors mm -hmm. that determines the uh, quick viral spread, especially the Omicron. So we have to understand how easily it transmitted and how it uh, uh, escaped the body defense system. So, Omicron is uh, very much uh, causing, uh, have an advantage of both easily transmittable and is uh, uh, escaping the body defense, but it has a very low hospitalization and very less, de less death as compared to Delta variants. Mm -hmm. But why these virus are uh, emerging with the new variants? Because virus want to survive. So they want, they keep changing their variants and the new variants are arising. Mm -hmm. There was a study that showed that Omicron is multiplying uh, 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 70 uh, times faster than the Delta variant, but it is not at uh, uh, detrimental as Delta variant. Mm -hmm. Now Omicron uh, infected people have very high load of virus in their throat and they are very much uh, ready to expel in the air uh, when they are is coughing and sneezing. So very high load of virus are there. Okay. Then if the person sitting next or person is not uh, taking appropriate COVID uh, uh, masking and uh, other um, uh, behavior, Protocols, they yeah. will get infected easily. Mm -hmm. Second thing, the Omicron has a very less chances of going from throat to lung. Yeah. And this is 10 times less multiplying in the lung. That's why it is not as much as causing hospitalization and death as compared to the Delta variant. Sure, yeah. But the question is, when we have vaccinated, hmm. when we, uh, previously we have a COVID infection, still we are getting Omicron infection. Why? Yes. Because Omicron is very specifically mm -hmm. mutated is spikes and they have very high advantage of uh, bypassing these vaccinated and previous infected immune uh, innate immune person also to get infected when they are not following the COVID appropriate behavior. Yeah. So what is COVID appropriate behavior? You must take masks, you must wash respiratory hygiene mm -hmm. when you are splitting 
then you must spit and cover do yes. not spit here and there and your coughing and sneezing must have the minimum adequacy of covering your mouth or with your uh, shoulder uh, uh, arm it's a so lot that you're not spread. exposing anybody coming else coming to the diabetic coming to the diabetic yes. you must control your sugar fasting should be less than 100 bp mm -hmm. should be less than 140 hpa once it should be less than 7% okay. eat well eat healthy eat on time hydrate well and take all medicine on time and you must do regular checkup and self monitoring at home so yes. these are the core factor when we are having omicron and you want to Uh, cut down the omicron infection completely i think you've explained that really well whether it's following the covid protocols and what even diabetic patients to do to avoid any complications dr kamkar all people in our country like in india everybody has either taken the covaxin or covishield vaccines tell us are these vaccines effective <laughs> against the new variant omicron they have very high advantage please go ahead dr kamkar Doctor, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, Doctor Kamkar, what I was asking you, a lot of everybody in our country has got the vaccine, has either got COVID shield or they've got Covaxin. So tell us, are these vaccines no, effective against you. Omicron, and how effective are they? Okay, I think I think I'm just going to. You know, Mr. Uh, Dr. Mittal, if I can ask you, I think we'll just come back. Uh, Dr. Mittal, tell us: Should people with diabetes or with any comorbid condition or on antiplatelet therapy take vaccination or not? And do these vaccinations have any risk to people with comorbid conditions? See, everybody should take vaccine. Okay. The issue of vaccine is not about the issue of vaccine safety. Mm -hmm. It's not about the safety of the vaccine, but it's about safety from the vaccine. so vaccination is especially important in patients who are having diabetes or high blood pressure similarly patient with who are overweight or obese should also get vaccination why it is important because we all know that patient who are having comorbid conditions like diabetes hypertension or overweight they are more likely to suffer from the severe complications of the covid infection mm -hmm. so if you are vaccinated you will be protected and vaccine does not have any adverse effect in these patients now regarding patients who are having taking antiplatelet drugs or blood thinners you must remember that these vaccines are safe in patients who are taking blood thinners now there are two types of the blood thinners one is the antiplatelet drugs and second is the anticoagulants so most of the patients who have got stents implanted in them or who have undergone bypass surgery they are on the antiplatelet drugs okay. and we all know that antiplatelet drugs are aspirin or clopidogrel mm -hmm. so these drugs are safe and any person taking aspirin or clopidogrel can take vaccine without any fear of having adverse complication okay. now there are some patient who have been replaced with the heart valve so patients who are having at artificial heart valves are on the anticoagulant drugs and they must be taking drugs like acitrom or warfarin now if any one of you are taking warfarin or acitrom you must consider consult your doctor he may advise you to interrupt this drug for day or two and then you can take vaccine but they are all vaccines all types are uh, safe in the patients who are taking yes. Nurse. I think the bottom line here is vaccination is key, and of course, talking to your doctor so that you're comfortable on what you're really taking. Yes. Moving on, Dr. Shankar, what should be the targeted fasting and post-prenatal blood sugar levels in elderly people, especially over the age of 70? Can you also tell us about the targeted blood pressure numbers? This is a WhatsApp question. In fact, uh, one of our viewers wants to know. Okay, thanks, and I think uh, I must thank the your viewer that asking very important and yes. practical question. and there is a lot of confusion about it first we should know what is the normal fasting postprandial and hpa1c fasting should be less than 100 postprandial should be less than 140 hpa1c should be less than 7% and there is a new entity in glycemic uh, parameters its time in range it should be 70% in 24 hours now coming to the question when the age advances 
when we cross a 65 years of age then we should be a liberal in controlling sugar because mm -hmm. if we control very strictly the chances of hypoglycemia increases so what should we do the fasting as per the european guideline the fasting should be between 117 to 135 hpa1c 7 to 7.5% in those who have only diabetes mm -hmm. but if anybody have a multiple disease along with diabetes having cardiac disease or kidney disease or leg problem or ulcer then again the fasting should be less than 160 hpa1c less than 9% but when you okay. cross the uh, um, to america and american diabetic association has a little low value and we follow the americans yes. because we have a multiple a, 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 a races over there so fasting should be less than 130 Those okay. products should be less than 150, and HPA ones should be less than 7.5%. Okay. And in comorbid, if you have hmm. somebody with multiple Other diseases, issues, yeah. then it should be less than 180. Okay. Thank you for Coming explaining. Coming to the BP, yeah. uh, yes, for the blood pressure, BP should be less than 140 to 90 in elderly. Not very much control. Mm -hmm. Not 130 or 80. It okay. will cause more harm than the benefit. Okay. Okay, I think you've explained that really well. So, moving on, Dr. Mittal, people who take cholesterol-lowering drugs assume that they do not really need to follow a particular diet of how have any restriction on food choices. Tell us what really is the fact. You are right. Taking a cholesterol medicine hmm. is not an excuse for an unhealthy diet. Okay. We all know, you know, that there is a big benefit of taking statin therapy or any other cholesterol-lowering therapy. But you know, there are something called non pharmacological interventions means non drug intervention which are age effective at drug therapy for the prevention of heart attack mm. so we recommend you to continue to other I, I can't hear dr mittal now hello yes please go ahead dr mittal yeah so we recommend you to watch your carbohydrate intake and fat intake carefully mm -hmm. you should also watch your alcohol intake it's important to limit or curtail your alcohol intake as much as possible mm -hmm. and not only about the diabetes or uh, cholesterol therapy healthy diet also contribute to control of blood pressure and it may prevent onset of the diabetes who are susceptible for the diabetes development okay, okay. so you should follow these guidelines but it's okay to cheat some time maybe in a week or try uh, Uh, once in a month or two times in a month you can have a food of your choice but overall you should try to stick to a diet and it's important to monitor and optimize your body weight also okay okay no i think that's really well explained and how one should also you know the connection between cholesterol and diabetes and how to keep a check on that Uh, we have a whatsapp question from one of our viewers in fact i would request the viewers to please send us your name and location as well but thank you for the question the question is is it possible to reverse diabetes completely dr kamkar what are your thoughts on this uh, question from a viewer yes uh, this is one of the most uh, common questions uh, in the mind of uh, many diabetic patients especially young diabetics type 1 diabetes cannot be reversed yes type 2 diabetes to a small extent in small percentage of patients can be reversed now let me explain okay type 2 diabetic patients who follow a low calorie low carbohydrate diet and if they are obese if they look lose considerable weight follow a disciplined diet then in such patients over a period of time the blood sugar gets controlled mm -hmm. and so, sometimes they are completely off medications okay with normal blood sugars then the patient can be called in in remission mm -hmm. however remission is not permanent okay with due course if such patients do not follow their disciplined diet lifestyle mm -hmm. then again the blood sugar can rise so for diabetic patients is important they do uh, uh, have routine check up mm -hmm. with their doctors and uh, do routine mon uh, monitoring of blood sugars even if the blood sugars are normal or technically they are in remission 
okay so extra there is no permanent yeah yeah there is no permanent cure for diabetes mm -hmm. but yes good care and control is definitely possible so no cure cure but yes you can reverse it it'll be in remission but that all depends on the patient how they are dealing with it you know your strict lifestyle modification like you said exercising eating well sleeping so i think all these things are really important so on that note we're going to be taking a really short break in fact if our viewers if you all have any questions you would like to ask our experts please send them to us via whatsapp on the following number the number is plus 9191676641 to send in your name and location as well and our experts will answer them for you we'll be right back welcome back you're watching beat diabetes myths and facts Dr Shankar tell us is it really possible to increase immunity to any infectious diseases by controlling blood pressure blood sugar and regular physical activity Absolutely absolutely and uh, uh, Dr Kundan has uh, explained this uh, yeah. uh, uh, when he was uh, briefing about uh, uh, how to reverse diabetes Remission, See, yeah. exercise is now a very important uh for the immune system adjuvant to stimulate the defense mechanism of the tissue circulation and as a body whole and the exercise has a capacity to improve and regulate the immune system it enrich the blood and the body to fight and repair when the infection enters the body in terms of bacteria virus or fungus or body daily wear and tear mm -hmm. so exercise is very important it okay. improve the inflammatory effect im improve the glycemic parameters it improve the lipid metabolism it improve the blood pressure it improve the cardiac health it improve the mm -hmm. muscle physical health by toning up it decrease the mental stress and okay. improve the quality of life so yes. exercise is equivalent to wellness Absolutely. there is another benefit of exercise particularly in covid era yeah. when we take vaccine mm -hmm. and we don't uh, exercise then the vaccine uh, 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 antibody production is yes. less i think you... another uh, no please another thing is the gut uh, there is a lot of uh, organisms mm. healthy organisms are there in our gut yes. which digest our food and we don't exercise and keep eating the gut microbiota decreases and yeah. that decreases the immune system hmm. so it is very important to exercise to enhance our everything exercise not only improve it boost the quality of yeah. life i think you really so put that well i think you really important put in that decreasing well. the mortality and not only it also decreases the infection due to influenza and pneumonia okay so it is very important to exercise no and i mean i'm sure it's really motivating a lot of people to exercise because you put it really well that how it's really about wellness and the connection with gut immunity and it's not only about physical wellness also mental well-being okay, uh, dr kamkar internet is flooded with lots of information about the do's and don'ts of diabetes some articles state that you know cinnamon hibiscus uh, apple cider vinegar can lower blood sugar so is all this true uh so far uh, low calorie low carbohydrate diet helps in diabetes control uh, avoiding sugar and refined carbohydrates are one of the best dietary intervention mm -hmm. now coming to the question yes uh, herbs like cinnamon apple vinegar and hibiscus tea when included in a diabetic specific diet plan definitely can help in blood sugar control okay cinnamon has action to decrease the insulin resistance and increase the insulin sensitivity mm -hmm. it has a antioxidant property it has a fat burning action to promote weight loss hibiscus tea is an antioxidant okay. and apple vinegar also facilitates in weight loss which is essential in diabetes control okay. but all said these nutrients uh, or herbs are no magical cure for diabetes mm -hmm. they can be very much part of a diabetic uh, diet plan yeah along with natural food ingredients of like course. fenugreek 
turmeric which have a anti diabetic property hmm. such specific diet plan should be under the supervision of your doctor of and a qualified so along with medications it's important yeah. that you know these things can add on to it but medications are important that's i think the key point out here um, dr mittal diabetes and heart disease have similar risk factors and these both exist simultaneously most of the time but if people with diabetes take regular medications and control their blood sugar are they safe from heart diseases see diabetes and blood pressure are important causes of the heart attack and stroke but uh, heart attack and stroke they are having multiple causes and that's why we call them multifactorial illnesses so apart apart from diabetes and hypertension if you are having high cholesterol levels and if you are using tobacco in any form see smoking or tobacco chewing they are important causes of the heart attack and stroke mm -hmm. these are multifactor illnesses and then there is a genetic tendency if any of your family member has got heart disease at the younger age any sibling brother or sister or sure. your parents at the early age then probably you are having a genetic tendency to develop heart attack and you should be extra careful, careful. and then lastly there are some people who are having very tense personality we call mm -hmm. them type a personalities mm -hmm. and they experience lot of stress at the work so okay. work related stress is a very important cause of having heart disease okay. so you should also take care of all these things so these are the things and you can start screening earlier to avoid any kind of complication yeah. thank you all so much doctors for joining us and sharing us all your expertise with us in fact for our viewers if you all have any questions you would like to ask our experts please send them to us via whatsapp the number is plus 9191676641 -6 please do also send us your name and your location news will continue on the other side Thank you.